April Walker from the Yoga Ranger Studio and today's practice is all about grounding. So if you've been feeling anxious or frustrated or you just have a lot going on in your life that feels like it's just really crazy and there will be times of year and times in the seasons that you will feel a little bit less grounded and stable, this practice is going to help you settle in and find a little bit of stability. Couple of props that you might want to have. You can use a blanket or something underneath to give yourself a little bit more comfort for some of these poses. Optional, entirely optional. A second blanket folded up about four times or a beach towel so it gives you a little bit of height for some of our seated postures so you get a little bit of the pelvic tilt forward. And for the very end, I'm gonna offer you a couple of alternatives to our end uh, pose. And for that, you might use a bolster if you have one. If you don't, a pillow from your bed or a couple of blankets or just something to kind of wrap your arms around would work perfectly. But since we're not gonna be using this right now, we'll take it off to the side. We'll take our other blanket across the back because we'll be using that momentarily. But we're gonna start with a toe flip. So you're gonna lean forward, take your toes, flip them over. And I like to do this manually because sometimes my toes do not do what I want them to do. Now, you can sit up or you can keep your fingers on the floor. This depends a lot on how your toes feel on the bottom of your feet. Take some nice deep breaths. We're just gonna be here for about six breaths. This is a wonderful stretch for the bottom of your feet and ankles and your toes. Our first two poses stimulate all the lower body meridians, helping bring balance to the energy in the lower half of the body, all the organ systems below the belly. Last deep inhale and exhale. Start to rock forward, come on to your fingertips. Flip those toes back and maybe kind of tap them against the floor. Curl and uncurl, wave them around. And then our second pose, lay those feet flat and sit back. So this may be where you need to stay. If you wanna go a little further, you can start to take your hands back behind you and lift your knees off the floor. If you have a little bit more space in the top of your feet, you can take your hands to your heart. Always feel free in a yin posture to come out of it if it causes you a great deal of pain or sharp shooting pains or if it's just too much. Just back out a little ways and see where you can find that edge. We always in yin go to our two thirds, our maximum stretch. So you can certainly go further, but because we're holding them for longer, you might not want to. One more deep inhale and exhale. and then drop those knees down and go ahead and come into child's pose. So take your knees a little bit wider than hip distance, rest your head on your hands. You can stop, stack the fists on top of one another and just relax. Begin to arrive in your practice and settle. Slow your breath, allow your exhale to be a little bit longer than your inhale. And slowly pressing up, we're gonna come into butterfly pose. So taking your blanket off to the side, we're gonna sit on the very edge of it, bringing the bottoms of the feet together. Sit up nice and tall to start with, and then start to slide your hands down. So you want your feet to begin separating, and that's sort of the distance you wanna have away from you, so mine naturally separate here. Drop your chin to your chest, 
fold over. Now remember in a yin practice, the idea is to just let go. We're focusing on the connective tissue, so we don't need to have a straight back. We're letting gravity do the work for us. Giving us the pull down that we need. Just let the weight of your head and shoulders take you where they need to go. If you find that your head is much closer to your feet, you can always rest your head on your feet or you can make use of the bolster we have off to the side as well. Well, gently begin to walk your hands to the inside of your heels and press yourself all the way back to upright. We're going to take deer pose next. So you're going to take that right foot, turn it out to the right. So you can turn the foot at a 90 degree angle or you can flex it flat. Depends entirely on you. Take one hand to the inside of your knee and one to the outside and sit up nice and tall. So relax this front of this right thigh. I know that's kind of hard to do sometimes in this pose. Sense gravity. Sense the ground beneath you, the stability. Begin to notice the pause at the bottom of your exhale. This occurs naturally. There's just a little sort of a waiting before you inhale. And just noticing that pause, begin to exaggerate it just a little. Go ahead and take that right leg out to the right. We're going to bring that left foot in to the hip. So if this does not work for your knee, you can always keep that foot out there in front. 
You're going to walk your hands and fold forward just for six or seven breaths. Remember to release your feet and let gravity take you where it wants to go. Pressing yourself back up, you're going to turn yourself over to the left and lean over to the right. Take that left hand on your left knee and just start to drift your right ear over to your right shoulder. I'm going to rotate that left shoulder open just a little bit. And sense the back of your body, the back of your leg and your hips, stable on the floor. And slowly, you're going to take that right hand and press your head back to center. Take a deep breath here. And I'm going to come right into pigeon from this. So go ahead and lean over your left knee. Turn that foot out. Walk your right foot back behind you. So for pigeon, if you want to use that blanket and tuck it underneath your hip and put it to support, you can. Start with walking your hands out for just a breath here, lengthen, and then start to lower yourself down. So another alternative for this pose, if this is just not available for your knee, is to roll to the outside edge of your hip and take that foot out a little further. If you are able to take your head to the floor or onto your elbows, go ahead and take that version.
Just one more deep breath. Gently start to walk your hands back to center. You're going to flip your back toes and come back to downward facing dog. Just for five breaths to stretch the legs out. You can walk your dog out. Shake your head out yes and no. And go ahead and come back down onto your knees and come back into your butterfly position. Bottoms of the feet together. We're going to switch sides, taking that left leg over to the left. Hands on the inside and on the outside. Sit up nice and tall and sort of feel the release in this left quadricep and outside of the IT band area. There's a lot of connective tissue located in this big area around the outside edge of the hip. So it's a great place to spend a little time. Once again, return to exaggerating that pause at the bottom of the exhale. This is going to help you feel more settled, more secure. Gently lean over to the right a little bit. Take that left leg out to the corner. Wiggle the toes a little bit. And then go ahead and pull that right foot in if that's okay with your knee. So we're going to start with the forward fold to begin with. So go ahead and walk your hands forward. And know that every side is different. So if in this side you can't fold as far forward, that's just very normal for most people to have one side that's far more mobile than the other. Keep some softness in that left knee. Start to walk your hands back to center. Take a breath here. And start to turn yourself over that right knee. Lean over to the left. Rest your hand palm up on your knee or on the floor. You're just going to rest your right hand on your knee. It's going to give it a little weight. And you can start to drop your left ear over to the left shoulder. Keep 
rotating that right shoulder back a little bit. Keeping your connection with your breath, allowing the exhale to be longer, that pause to be a little longer. Next inhale, start to take that left hand to your temple and press yourself back up to center. Take a couple of nice deep breaths here in the middle. And then moving into our pigeon pose. Walk that left leg back behind you, right knee out to the side. Once again, you can take your blanket underneath the hip or not. Walk your hands out just a little bit, stretch, and then slowly lower down. Now it may be that you stay on forearms or fingertips. Once again, you can always take out to the side if this is the knee that causes you discomfort in this posture. Allow yourself to sink into this though, your hips to ground.
like to bring your palms flat and lift up for a stretch. Walk your hands in, flip your back toes and come back to your downward facing dog just for five breaths here. your dog out, rock hip side to side. And then go ahead and come down onto your knees and all the way down onto your belly for Sphinx Pose. So you're gonna take your palms together, relax the lower body, pull the shoulders away from the ears and then drop your chin to your chest. Once again, checking in with your breath. Allowing your breath to be full. Long inhale and exhale, extending that exhale and that pause just a little bit more. It's gonna allow your chest to sink down a little bit deeper into this pose. Gently take those elbows out and rest your head on your forearms or hands just for a breath or two. Walking your hands underneath your shoulders, you're going to come back into child's pose. Big toes together, knees a little bit closer than usual. You can rest your head on your fists stacked on top of each other or your forehand, hands, forearms, floor.
Slowly start to press yourself up. And you're gonna take that blanket that you have that's folded up, sort of crossways across. This helps your knees take a little bit less compression here. Taking that right leg out, we're gonna come into winged dragon. So lift that back knee up, flip the toes, and then drop it back down, toes flat. You're gonna walk that right foot over to the right just a little bit and turn it out at a little angle toward the right and then roll onto the outside of the right foot. Come down to wherever you want to come down to. We're gonna be here for about two minutes. In this pose, you can really concentrate on extending your exhale, maybe by now to two to three to even maybe double your inhale count. Extending your pause at the bottom to two to four counts on your pause. For instance, inhale for five, then exhale eight maybe. and then hold out for one, two, and three. Inhale, five. Exhale, maybe nine. Hold for one, two, and three. Begin to bring that right foot flat to the floor and shift your weight back. We're gonna take downward facing dog here again. Hips high. And if downward facing dog is not an option or doesn't feel good, you can always take child's pose again or cat cow. I just find downward facing dog stretches out my legs a little bit more. Coming back down onto your knees and taking that left foot out in front fingertips down. You're going to lift that back knee up, drop it down and pull it to you just a little bit. Walk that left foot over to the left, turn it out to the left and roll into the outside edge. Back foot flat. It can be up, up if that feels more comfortable for your knee. And once again, coming back to that five, eight, three breath. Inhale for five. Exhale for eight. Hold at the bottom for three. Inhaling again.
Start to bring that left foot flat, walk your hands back, shift back into cat cow, child's pose or downward facing dog. And then go ahead and come back down. Take your blanket off to the side. And that bolster or pillow that you have as well, in case you want to use that toward the end. And come down all the way onto your back. Just a little twist here. Arms out to the side. Shift your hips over to the right. You can either cross that right leg over or you can just stack the knees on top of one another and drop your knees over to the left. Right arm out to the right. I like to take my left hand and place it on my belly, but you can always take it out a different direction or just lay it wherever it feels comfortable. Turn your head back to the middle. Engage your core, bring those knees back through center. Take a moment here to let the back come back to neutral. And then shifting your hips over to the left, you can cross that left leg over, or you can just stack the knees and drop those knees to the right. Left hand goes out to the left, right hand goes to your belly or chest. And turn and look over your shoulder or look straight up. Turn your head back to center and you're gonna roll over to your right side and come all the way down onto your belly. So here's where your options are gonna come in. We're gonna take a couple of breaths here in a face down Shavasana. So you can take your blanket underneath your forehead, arms out to the side in a cactus style position. And for Shavasana, you can feel free to stay in this position or you can roll to your right side, take your bolster or pillow, 
your right arm out, your left hand across the pillow, stack your knees, take sort of a fetal posture. You can continue to stay here as long as you need to in whatever version of Shavasana that you like the best. Or if you are ready, if you are on your belly, go ahead and roll to your right side. If you are on your right side, you can start to move that bolster off to the side. Gently make your way up to whatever seated position you like best. Keeping your eyes closed, your hands to your heart. So take your right hand to your belly, right above your belly button, your left fingertips down to the floor. Releasing your fingertips down to the ground. Inhale, sweep the hands all the way up overhead. Open your eyes, look up at your palms, exhale, hands to heart. Peace and namaste. I hope this practice brought you a little bit more grounding and stability in sort of a crazy time in your life. If you enjoyed this practice, please don't forget to like down below, the thumbs up, comment and or subscribe and share this practice with someone you think might need it as well. I hope to see you again on the mat. Thank you so much for joining me and sharing your practice with me. Have a great day.